All right, the court calls next the case of State versus Kyle Moore. Kyle, would you come up, please? Kyle, how are you doing? Um, been doing fairly well. Okay, good. Well, tell me how things are going in your life. Uh, I've got a job, um, working full time, I'm going to IOP tw twice a week, going to three AA meetings a week. And I started using drugs when I was 14 years old. Um, I was in Boy Scouts, and there was a group of scouts, my friend's older brothers, that would smoke pot during the, during the campouts. And so I started smoking pot. It's, it's really creepy because when I started smoking, I remember telling someone that once I started doing this, I, like, I felt that I liked it so much I wasn't going to be able to stop. It just progressed. And by the time I was 15, 16, I was using cocaine and ecstasy and a lot more hardcore drugs, and it finally just built its way up to heroin. I didn't get caught until it was between 18 and 19 years old, and that was for robbing the house. One of my friends was watching this house, and I had broken into houses before, but I knew this would be easy, and I did that, and his, his dad eventually found out within 24 hours and knew it was us, and he made his son try to get us to bring back the, the goods that we stole. I had already sold off everything. I sold, I sold it for cocaine and Xanax, and I did about five and a half grams of cocaine in roughly three hours and took about 15 Xanax and overdosed and got taken to the hospital. And then I eventually got taken to a mental institution because they thought I was suicidal. Kyle, do you feel like you're doing all right in drug court right now? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, any changes or adjustments we need to make? No, Your Honor. How are you doing financially? Everything's doing okay? Great. Or? Everything's doing good. Okay. So you're right on track and feel like you are where you need to be? Yes, Your Honor. The reason I started my drug court program back in 2005 was because I kept seeing the same people come through the system over and over again, and I decided that I wanted to try to see if I could do something to stop that. And so that would be to help those people to focus on those cases try to help them get clean and sober so they wouldn't be repeat offenders. There's exceptions to every rule, certainly. Um, but normally, when we arrest someone for an offense of a, a possession of a more severe drug, let's say methamphetamine or cocaine or heroin, one of the higher grade of felony drugs, and we interview that person, we talk to that person, and we look back at their drug use history, almost every time we can point to a alcohol, marijuana, prescription medication, or even over-the-counter substance abuse prior to the point where they got to where we encountered them with the felony drug. Those are the people that need help the most, and the studies show that those are the people that can be helped the most. People who have minimal addictions can be just on regular probation, but people who are severely addicted to drugs and alcohol, they need more than minimal supervision. A drug court is a model program that has been proven to both reduce recidivism and lower drug use, substance abuse in any community. It is a very intensive program. It requires a, a large team of professionals all collaborating on each individual participant in drug court. Drug court programs try to stop the cycle of addiction, try to keep them here, try to get them a job, try to turn them into uh, tax-paying, law-abiding citizens instead of off to prison. We're charged with the responsibility of rehabilitating juveniles. First of all, safety to the community. Second of all, rehabilitating juveniles. If we don't do that, they commit a new offense, we believe that we have failed them.
We are dealing with a different person. We are dealing with an adolescent brain. That's why we have the juvenile law is because we don't believe that juveniles are many adults. We believe that juveniles are impulsive and it's not necessarily a character issue. It's something we can rehabilitate and direct. And so that when we look at drug use in the juvenile community, we're looking at a whole lot of impulsivity. But what we take in in the juvenile drug court are the people that we believe are substance dependent. And for most 16, 15 year olds, they're not going to say to us, I have reached my bottom, I will never drink or use again. So what we do is we have them required to have sobriety for the period that they're with us and hope, we hope they'll see that they can accomplish so much more with sobriety and with being clean than they could when they were drug dependent. One of the things I like to tell kids when, they're, when, they're, when we're having this discussion is that it's not just your criminal record that you may have. I mean, think of the long-term consequences of that. It could, it could have direct, direct implications on the school that you're able to attend or the school that you're not able to attend. It could have implications on your graduation date. It could have implications on your friends. Uh, it could have implications on military service down the road. And it could have significant financial implications on you and your family that uh, really could be very difficult to, to overcome. So whenever I take someone into the program or they want to come into the drug court program, I like to meet with them personally and tell them about how hard it is, that it's more difficult than anything they've ever done, more difficult than any probation they've ever been on, and that if they use, I'm going to catch them, and that if I catch them, they're going to go to jail. And we have a graduated matrix, uh, sanctions matrix that, that we use. So it might be three days in jail for the first violation, seven days the next violation, 14 days the next one, 21 days the next one, 30 days, 180 days. But we don't give up. We don't give up. We don't send people to prison. We try to keep them here and get them clean and sober. I hadn't had periods of sobriety before, um, but they never lasted. And I think it's because I didn't have a routine. I'd go into a rehab, I'd get out, and I'd go back to an apartment or back home and try to do everything on my own. And it just never worked out for me. And I knew that drug court had a routine and accountability through the judge and the kind of counsel they have uh, that would hold me accountable for what I was doing wrong. Well, the number one role that the court plays in the whole drug court program is constant monitoring of the individual. And so there are regular and frequent contacts with the court itself. We use a little external motivation. You are either welcome to go to long term for a year of secure detention, or you are welcome to work this very rigorous program. One of the big things that kept you on your toes was you got drug, drug tested at least three times a week, and it was random. You woke up every morning and you had a certain amount of time to call in. I don't, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I, I didn't fail any drug test and I never had a violation. And it was just basically, you just got to get a mindset that this is what you're going to do and this is how you're going to do it. And this is the way you're going to make your life from then on. And you, and you just take it one day at a time too. Well, I've asked a lot of my graduates, you know, what was it that, that made it work this time when it didn't work before? 
And they said it's the uh, constant supervision, the close uh, supervision by the judge and the drug court team, the accountability. You had all these people caring about what you did and that you weren't just another number for them. And they actually realized who you were and like what type of person you were and the goals you had and they wanted to help you get those goals. They are our graduates and they're feted with a very large party. We have cake and it's a very big deal. And the child writes a paragraph or two and presents it to the other participants so that they too can see that they can reach that point and graduate. And they also get their records sealed. At successful graduation, they get all their records sealed that they were that they previously had. And so in the juvenile court, it really means a difference between leaving your past behind you and starting new. People are amazed that the judge walks right up in the courtroom and shakes their hand, asks them how they're doing, you know, asks about the kids and the family. They get to know us, we get to know them. Uh, it felt really, really nice because I, I really hadn't, since I was, since I graduated high school, I hadn't really attained anything that was worthwhile. I mean, besides felonies, that was the only thing that I'd really gotten for myself. So to be able to actually complete a course or a program and come out, come out on the other side and look good, it, it felt really nice. <laughs>